As it relates to squats, there's so much bad advice out there that's been given. It's created this culture of people who just don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they think that what they're doing is best for them, when really, the exact opposite is probably true. So I'm going to explain why a lot of things are the way they are as it relates to squats right now. So first thing I'm going to talk about is that a lot of people think that you should squat as low as you can until your knee is bent at 90 degrees. That's where you stop and then you reverse the movement. They think that that is safest for the knee. A lot of people think that letting your knee pass over your toe is bad for your knee and therefore you should avoid it. So you should keep your knee behind your toe. That's bad advice. I'm going to explain why that is. And then a lot of people think that going as low as you can, which is going to promote a posterior pelvic tilt, also known as butt wink, a term that I fucking hate. I'm not going to use it again. But a lot of people think that that is bad. And that is bad advice and I'm going to explain why. So I created this little whiteboard here. It says what you know about squat. And the first thing I want to talk about is depth and why you got to get past that fucking 90 degree range that people go through. So the first thing is people say, well, I heard it's bad for the knees. Here's the thing. The knees are designed to fully flex and extend. If they weren't designed that way, we wouldn't have that fucking option in the first place. But what happens is if you live in the Western world, from the time you're like four years old, you're in school, you're sitting down for a large portion of your day. Then as you go into like middle school, secondary school, post-secondary school, you're sitting for like multiple hours every single day. After that, depending on what field you get into, you're sitting every day at work. And to recover from the stress of your work, you go home and you sit more. So what happens? Your body adapts to this lifestyle. It habituates. It will start to, you know, limit what your body can do to only what it needs to do. And if it only needs to sit for most of the day, it's not going to need to go through full ranges of motion. So mobility will be compromised. Why is the mobility going to be maintained if you're not maintaining it? It doesn't work like that. The body adapts to the stimulus it is subjected to. So if you sit all the time, sitting leads to movement restrictions in the range of motion below the seated position. So now if people start to squat, they think that they shouldn't go past a certain range anyways because it feels uncomfortable and unnatural. Well, it's only uncomfortable and unnatural because you made it that way. But the way you were born, it's very normal and very natural to go through the ranges of motion that the body was designed to go through in the first place. A lot of people don't know this, but the knee is least stable at 90 degrees. It's going to promote degeneration of the knee. So if you ever go to a physiotherapist and they're going to test the integrity of your knee, what they do is they bend it to 90 degrees because if you want to test the integrity of the ligaments, you want minimal interference from other structures. So why would they bend it to 90 degrees to test the integrity of the ligaments? Because that's where there's the least interference from other structures. It's the least stable position. So what people are doing is when they squat to 90, number one, squatting to 90, half-assed range of motion, you can use more weight. So people are using more weight and they're squatting down to the position where their knee is at its fucking least stable. You're promoting problems to happen later. So you got to go through a full range of motion. And people say, well, if the knee passes over the toe, if it goes in front of the toe, there's greater torque on the knee, right? That's bad. Well, not really. Everything is going to come with a cost. But if you keep your knee behind your toe, because going over the toe is bad for you, what happens is you've increased the torque on the back by a thousand percent. So I don't know about you, but if I had to sacrifice one area, I'd rather sacrifice a knee instead of my back. Because if I sacrifice my back, I can't use my fucking knees anyways. So it's not even to suggest that that's going to happen though, but rather that there's going to be a cost with everything that you do. And I'd rather have the cost go onto the knees than a thousand percent higher on my back. And there's a lot of benefits to going through a full range of motion. Number one, it stretches the soft tissue. Because you're going through a greater range of motion, there's a greater stretch being imposed on all the tissues involved that are being stretched. This can facilitate improved mobility. Improved mobility can facilitate improved knee health because if the ankles are as mobile as they need to be, the knee can do its job of remaining stable when it needs to be. If the ankle is immobile because your body is habituated to your you know, lifestyle or whatever it is that you do, then what happens is when you try to go through certain ranges of motion, if you don't have that mobility in the ankle or the hip or other places, then the knee is going to be compromised to facilitate the movement that you're trying to do in the first place. And that can be bad. So going through a full range of motion, stress the soft tissue, facilitate improved mobility, facilitate improved knee health or prevention of knee issues. Another thing, the muscle that's stretched the most is recruited the most. So one of the muscles of the knee responsible for tracking the knee it doesn't get fully stretched if you don't go through a full range of motion in the first place. So if you stop at 90, you're promoting the development 
of some muscles at the expense of the others and that's going to promote asymmetrical development and that will cause its own set of problems. So if you go through a full range of motion, you stretch the VMO, the inner muscle of the quad along the medial line of the body, so depending on which leg you're looking at, whatever's closest to the midline, the teardrop looking muscle, it's going to be stretched to a greater degree, therefore it's going to be recruited to a greater degree, therefore you're going to promote more balanced development of the muscles around the knee and that's going to promote health and longevity of your fucking knees. Now. To get to the depth necessary to stretch that muscle and reap all those benefits, there's going to be a posterior pelvic tilt. And people say, well, isn't that bad? Well, that's actually just a consequence of the depth required to optimally reap all those benefits, to stretch the VMO so that it's recruited more, to stretch the soft tissue, to facilitate improved mobility and improved knee health. It's just a consequence that there's going to be a rounding of the pelvis underneath the body at the bottom. This is not bad, though. A lot of people say, well, it's bad for the back. It's very, very dangerous. Well, actually, this is probably one of the only ways that you can dynamically train the erectors because do you have to dynamically train the erectors first off? No, you don't. You can build good, strong, whatever you want, depending on what you train for erectors by training them isometrically like you would with deadlifts and other exercises. But if you want to maximize the return on investment of time and effort and train every muscle to the best of its capacity, I can't think of many ways that you can practically train the erectors more or even as good as going through a squat through a full range of motion. So you're gonna dynamically train the erectors and then people say, well, it's bad for the back, uh, you know, pain and all this other shit. It decompresses the lumbar spine when you get the posterior pelvic tilt because the compression on the lumbar spine is measured by the distance between the bar and your hips on a horizontal line. So the closer these two points are together because you're more upright on that horizontal axis, the less compression there is of the lumbar spine. So it decompresses the lumbar spine when you get the posterior pelvic tilt because it shortens the horizontal distance between the bar and the lumbar spine and you have to be more upright to do it. So now that you understand the benefits of going through a full range of motion when doing your squats in the first place, not worrying about stopping at 90 or not letting your knees pass over your toes or even worrying about the posterior pelvic tilt, how can you go about training the squat? Well, you could do it flat footed, you could do it with heels elevated, you could do it forward, backwards. But I'm going to talk about two because there are some very distinct benefits that come from doing the squat flat footed like you normally would or with your heels elevated. So with flat footed, increased demand on the posterior chain because of where the center of gravity is in relation to the base of support. To get lower, you need to put your ass back more. This is going to stretch the muscles on the back side of the body. Therefore, they're going to be recruited to a greater degree. Now, when we compound this with the increased stability of being on a flat surface, you can use more weight. The more weight you use, depending on how you do what you do, you can promote potentially a greater growth or strength response or even body composition response. Whatever it is that you're training for, you can modify the way you're doing what you do. But that's one of the benefits to the flat foot. And greater transference over to sport because the posterior chain is heavily involved in propelling the body forward and upward. Most sports, you got to run or jump. So when you train those muscles to a greater degree, you use more weight, it can facilitate improved performance and greater transference also because you're on a flat surface. Most sports that I can think of are played on a flat surface. So those are the benefits to the flat-footed squat through a full range of motion. Heels elevated because of where the center of gravity is in relation to the base of support. You can stay more upright as you achieve the depth needed to reap all the benefits that I've discussed. So one of the benefits with the heels elevated, greater depth, increased demand on the VMO, the vastus medialis oblique, so that same quad muscle I was talking about, responsible for tracking the knee. Greater depth will facilitate improved mobility and being more upright, decompression of the spine. Now, regardless of how you want to squat though, the biggest point I want to get across here is right here at the bottom. Full range with posterior pelvic tilt is always better than bullshit range. A lot of people seem to think for whatever reason, that you gotta squat to 90 degrees only, the knees can't pass over the toe, and if the back rounds, that's a bad thing. These people are ill-informed, this is bad advice, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, and they're inadvertently doing more damage potentially than good. So that's something I wanted to share because a lot of people don't understand this. You like the information, share it. You like it for yourself, click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel. I'll keep bringing you the best you're gonna find.